also in the future, but years, not ours, and the bare white branches a century wakens. Nom, 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 nom. Is anyone actually reading any of this? Or are they all dead? I don't know if anyone besides us is even alive and playing this game, or if anybody even really cares what I have to say. Rose said I should add some stuff to this FAQ if anything occurred to me. So I guess I'm doing that. I figure, at the very least, it'll be a good reference for just us to use. But Dave probably won't read any of this because he's sort of this whopping stupid horse butt. Well, whatever. I finally figured out what those weird little codes on the back of the capture log cards are for. Well, maybe not what they're always for, but a way that Suburb has exploited them for in-game purposes. Every captured item stamps the card with a unique code, and a gizmo in Suburb called the Punch Desinix will punch a unique pattern of holes in the card, which is derived from that code. The punch card can then be used with the other gizmos to duplicate the item and or combine it with another item. I got to thinking about this, and with my amazing hacker skills, I noticed a trend. The whole pattern is based on a fairly simple cipher, converting the capture code to binary. And then the binary pattern is punched, where 1 is a punched hole and 0 is an unpunched slot. So um, here's the table just to be clear. There are a couple oddball characters, exclamation point and question mark, at the end, to bring it up to 63, 0 through 63 equals 64 total, i.e. 6 bits. Because the binary representation of the capture code characters are 6 bits each, which have a range of 0 to 63. So, for instance, the capture code for the hammer is NZ7UN6BI. Look up the index for N first, which is 49. The binary of 49 is 110001. Keep doing this for all the characters you get. Okay, that's the pattern that will be punched for the card, but the bits are arranged top to bottom, left to right, in four columns, like this. Or punched on a card, like this. Wow, okay, that pretty much looks like shit, but you get the idea. So to combine two items, you just overlap two punch cards. Only the places where both cards have a hole will show through. So it's sort of like a bitwise and operation on both cards. The new pattern gives you the code for a new item. For instance, combining the code for the hammer, NC7UN6BI, and a pogo ride, DQMJLEK, gives a new code with less holes, obviously, which translates to 126GH48G. That whole pattern went on to make the pogo hammer, which is so rad you have no idea. I've also wondered if you can combine items in other ways, like a bitwise OR. That means combining the cards to get more holes, not less, i.e. the new pattern has a hole for every hole on either card. This pattern would be accomplished by double punching a card, like two codes, one card. I've got to try that sometime. But there are some mysterious things about all this. First of all, with all the hole slots, there are 48 bits in total, which means there are 300 trillion possible codes and 300 trillion sounds huge. But when you consider it's supposed to be the account for all conceivable items, including all the wacky combinations and stuff, then it suddenly doesn't seem that big. This leads me to believe that not every combination of item has a viable duplicate, but this is kind of obvious anyway. Since there are many combinations of punch cards, that will produce either a blank card with and or a total punch card with or, so there are lots of dud combinations out there, and many that will lead to the same pattern. Like for instance, a gun and an atom bomb will make a sort of ultimate death ray, but for that matter a shoehorn and a pot of plant could lead to the exact same pattern. So weird. Also, it seems like combined items will always have patterns with either much fewer holes 
or much more holes than the ordinary items, which will occupy the vast meaty middle of all possible items. It is strange and counterintuitive that more complex items will have simpler patterns, but hey, there you have it. But all this sort of makes me guess the system can be cracked some way. Like you have a complicated item and you want to extract the simpler item compounds from it. There might be an algorithm for deriving the pattern you want, or at least narrowing down the possibilities. There might also be ways of charting through the simpler patterns on both ends of the bit spectrum. And paying down the ones that will make cooler stuff, who knows. I want to ask Jade about this because she's really good with this sort of thing, somehow, and even she doesn't have my lead hacker cred. Too bad she makes herself so scarce all the time. Jade, if you ever read this, let me know what you think. You enter the laboratory. You look around for mad scientists. There are no scientists to be found, mad or otherwise. Or anyone for that matter. This lab appears to be deserted. There is a kiosk, though. It looks like the kiosk monitors the lab's enormous hub grid. Jade, it is suggested that you transportalize as far down as you can go. This is as far down as you can go. The Grand Foyer is still a few floors down, but the transportalizer on that level is blocked by one of Grandpa's impressive big game trophies, and you just don't think that he would cotton to someone moving it. Speaking of which, here are some of his trophies now. He has a million of these ghastly things. You really dislike them. Jade, proceed. You hop down a level. Grandad also likes to accumulate valiant knights from his travels. These are pretty cool, you guess. Jade, keep going. Oh yeah. How could you forget about his stash of decrepit mummies? God, you hate these things. Jade, don't stop. This is your grandfather's collection of what he refers to as his beauties. No lovely lady will be fit for his collection unless her portrait has spent at least 20 years bleaching in the front window of a beauty parlour. A sort of establishment he's plundered no less frequently than ancient tombs. You guess they were sort of like your sisters while you were growing up, and you were always encouraged to look up to them. They were awfully pretty ladies, you suppose, but it was always hard to get as excited about them as Grandpa. Jade, study hard and keep your rifle at the ready! When adventure summons, I know you will rise to the task and take your rightful place among the daughters of Eclectica. That old cooch sure is a bag of wind. Jade, complete your descent. You reach the ground level. This is the stupid thing blocking the transportalizer. It is unspeakably hideous. Down the southeast hall is the grand foyer. You have to cross through it to leave the house. Looks like someone is pestering you even though you thought you logged off. Hi again, idiot! Oh no! So, I guess today is finally the day you fuck everything up! Mm. Is there nothing I can do to change your mind? You can leave me alone! How can you even be talking to me after I blocked you? And after I logged out! You don't get that I'm better and smarter than you in every way, forever! You don't get that because you are incredibly stupid! I get that you're a jerk and you should shut up! Goodbye, you jerk! Rose, look at the kiosk. Looks like a mapping of each hub's index. It appears one of the hubs was recently unlocked. Rose, it is suggested that you go to the center and do a goofy dance. At the center, you find a little stage that looks perfect for supporting a spectacularly silly dance. Or it would if standing on it didn't make you a little nervous, and also if that didn't sound like a retarded idea given the circumstances. It looks like the sort of various contraption you've been deploying in John's house. You wonder what it does. Rose, attempt to plug laptop into nearby hub. Great, you just vaporized your dead cat. 
Oh well, ashes to ashes, you guess. There's got to be a better way to deal with this lousy tree. Rose examines her fetch modus. Looks like you can choose between picking leaves or awkwardly uprooting the whole tree as you've been doing. You select leaf. You also turn off auto balance since its consequences can be a little mystifying sometimes. You gather up all your items again in an order that places your laptop in a conveniently accessible leaf. You're not sure why you didn't do this a lot sooner. Kind of a funny looking tree now, but your concern for structural elegance is at an all time low. Rose, it is suggested that you find the unlocked hub. As long as you're going to plug in your computer, you may as well find that hub. Here it is, hub sn underscore lab 0413. It is unlocked and thus removable from the grid. You suspect this was the same beacon transmitting the unsecured signal you were using earlier. You pick the laptop leaf from the tree. You plug your laptop into the hub, then capture log the hub and then the laptop. There must be a better place around here to set up your computer. This huge grid of electronics is sort of uninviting. You look around. Hey, what's that? It's another one of those ominous countdowns. You didn't notice it when you first entered the lab about a minute ago. It looks like this one may have been ticking for years. Whatever it's ticking down to, there isn't much time. You can only hope that when you turn on your computer again, there will be a connection invitation from one Mr. Strider. Again in the future, another timer winds down sideways. Keeps happening! What does? You don't have the time to humor every random thought that pops into your head. The clock is ticking. <laughs>